What's up guys, Mike here, and today we have what I think is a very exciting video because we are taking a look back at seven high school basketball legends. I'm talking about guys that racked up millions of views on YouTube, and I'm going to update you on where they are now. I'm talking about guys like Nico Mannion. I'm talking about the Jelly fan. I'm talking about even Leangelo Ball, because where's that guy been, honestly? Well, you're about to find out, and right before we get into this, I do want to say I am doing a giveaway on my Instagram right now. I'm giving away a free pair of basketball shoes to five of you. You guys all you have to do is go to my instagram at mike corzemba and from there follow the directions on the giveaway post the giveaway ends on december 24th the link to the giveaway is in the description and for now let's jump into this video number six jordan mccabe jordan mccabe was insane in high school with his flashy play a high intensity work ethic and standing at just five foot 11 inches jordan was a high school highlight machine and was also a star on the court he was chosen as wisconsin's mr bass basketball and capped off his career with a state championship victory and although he was not a five-star prospect he did commit to West Virginia and hopes were high going into his freshman season and although his play in college did get off to a slow start some signs of life did appear near the end of his year as during a seven game stretch he averaged 16 points per game and that included a 25 point 11 to 6 6 steal 5 rebound performance in a triple overtime win against TCU and I really don't want to talk down on Jordan at all because he seems like the type of player who just really just grinds and works his ass off to become the best player he possibly can be unfortunately though it does seem like his height has affected him at the next level because in my opinion if he was standing at six foot three he probably would have been a one and done prospect last season however standing at the height he is right now the results in his sophomore season have not been stellar because although he has started nine games jordan's efficiency has tanked as he is shooting 24 percent from the field and 11 percent from three hopefully that is a shooting slump and there is a flip side to this slow start he has started nine games he is averaging 1.3 steals per game and his team is currently sitting at a nine and one record with that one loss coming to st john's you know i went to st john's if you guys don't so although Jordan has not proven himself to be an NBA prospect quite yet, with the work ethic he has demonstrated throughout his career, I would not be surprised at all if he did figure it out and by the time he was a senior in college, things had changed and he suddenly was an NBA prospect. That is not uncommon, especially for someone with Jordan's draft. Number five, Javon Quinterly. Javon Quinterly of the Jelly Fam would take the basketball world by storm when in early 2017, with his purple shoes and Kyrie Irving-like layups, his presence on the internet was easily felt watching his highlight reels and mixtapes it is very easy to see why people would fall in love with javon and after being named a mcdonald's all-american in 2018 it was expected that he would go to villanova and make an immediate impact on a team that just came off of winning a national champion because as a floor general, it was expected that Javon would follow up one of the greatest leaders in Villanova program history, Jalen Brunson, and continue leading Villanova to glory. As teammate at the time, Phil Booth said, quote, JQ has a very well-known presence and draws a lot of attention from people. How creative and crafty he is with the ball, he's very well-liked. Unfortunately, while Javon was well-liked, that did not translate to the great leadership ability that Jalen Brunson had shown. Because as we see looking at his freshman season, well, Javon would average just 3.2 points per game so we cannot say that that year went well that season also included a controversial post where javon insinuated that he should not have attended villanova and eventually the drama ended in a transfer to alabama where he is sitting out this season so of course because he is such a young player and he has demonstrated a ton of talent in the past there is a lot of hope left for javon quinterly he could still blow up at alabama he could still become an nba player he is among all of the players on this list possibly the greatest mystery number four joe gerard joe gerard is a new york basketball legend he is the leading scorer in his state's history at nearly 5,000 points and so it is no secret that the best part of his game is scoring and just watching his play on the court right here you could tell that with a silky smooth jumper the man joe gerard knows how to get buckets that being said gerard was not highly ranked and he was actually outside of 247's top 200 and the feeling was that he was a good high school player but the scoring was not going to translate over to the next level however that did not stop syracuse from offering him a scholarship and although he did go into the syracuse program with low expectations gerard did have a chance to prove himself and the scoring ability has shown early on as right now he is putting up a very solid freshman campaign with 11.6 points 
4.6 assists, 2.4 rebounds, and even 1.6 steals a night. Which means, in my opinion, Joe Girard has shown he is a versatile offensive talent and is already able to hold his own on college basketball's biggest stage. He is also a player who is going to attract tons of fans, so if he does have a four-year college career, which I think he is going to, I am very excited to see the player he becomes as a senior because he could become incredibly dominant. I mean, again, the man almost scored five thousand points in high school that is ridiculous number three nico man as a freshman in high school, Nico Mannion had averages of 20.2 points, 4.7 assists, and 4.6 rebounds a game. And this would prove to be only the beginning, as by the time his senior year came around, he was getting this type of praise from Trey Young. And he got bounced. I've heard about him for a while. Nico can shoot it, he can play, he can score, he can pass. He got a nice jump shot. He got some swag with him too. Oh my God. Now, some players are hyped as phenoms as freshmen and they do end up fizzling out, but this was not the case for Nico. By his senior season, despite the fact that he reclassified, he was a McDonald's All-American and several of his games on YouTube racked up millions of views as everyone wanted to see the red-haired kid that was dominating everyone. Which meant that before his freshman season at Arizona, Nico was already hyped up as a potential lottery pick. However, he would have to prove himself at the next level and guys watching nico play this season it is very very clear that he has an advanced understanding of just how the game of basketball works the way he is able to dissect defenses with concise precision and rapid ability is absurd he is a leader a pass first point guard and is still in the lottery of most 2020 nba mock drafts now to be fair there are some concerns that when playing against more athletic defenders nico has struggled however for the season he is currently averaging 14.4 points and 6.5 assists on 43 percent shooting which is a very solid freshman season so far for a point guard plus he has already racked up awards such as pac-12 freshman of the week and was the mvp of the wooden legacy tournament after leading arizona to a championship victory there so while there is obviously room for improvement in nico's game from everything i have seen he is someone who grinds who works as hard as he can towards his dream of becoming one of the best basketball players in the world and personally Personally, I believe in Nico. I think he is going to be an NBA lottery pick, and I think he is going to be a solid point guard in the league for years to come. Number two, Isaiah Washington. Similar to Javon, Washington was a crucial part of the Jelly Fan a few years ago. With his magnetic personality, incredible dribbling ability, and of course, the insane layups, Washington was a highlight machine, and because of this and his ability on the court, he would earn a scholarship to the University of Minnesota. And again, similar to Javon, after after putting the basketball world on notice, the expectations were raised when college basketball started, and Washington did have a better freshman season than Javon. As Isaiah averaged 8.7 points per game, that being said, with a 36.6% field goal percentage and a 24.1% percentage from three, there was certainly plenty of room for improvement. And things would not work out at Minnesota, as Washington would decide to transfer and bring the finger roll back to New York and is now playing ball for nearby Iowa. At Iona, Isaiah was given immediate eligibility and at the very least is being given more leeway to play his style. He is playing more minutes. He's a starter and in his last game, he did have a 14.4 steal, three assist performance. That being said, he is only averaging eight points a game and is again shooting just 37% from the field. This is of course playing against lower competition. So while the Jelly Fam hype was there at one point, it's tough to say it, but Isaiah is a junior at this point. So it seems like the hype is is kind of gone at this point however i'm still rooting for the guy i hope he turns it around and number one leangelo ball it is no secret how much i've covered lonzo and lamello on this channel but now the time has come to talk about leangelo because yes ucla might have given him a scholarship simply out of clouds but the facts are that leangelo was an incredible scorer at the high school level and there was even one point in 2017 when max preps named him the favorite for high school player of the year so by any amount of college recruiting standards, he was at least a decent prospect. He was ranked a three-star. It was just hard for him to live up to the standard that Lonzo and LaMelo had set. And at UCLA in his first preseason game, he did score 11 points and things looked bright for a moment, but then everything came crashing down rather quickly. As days before his team's regular season opener against Georgia Tech in China, on November 7th, 2017, Leangelo and two other teammates were arrested for allegedly stealing sunglasses from a Louis Vuitton store. This story was well covered at the time, but we really need to emphasize here
here that Leangelo was facing very legitimate, very real prison time in a foreign country. That was very scary, but luckily Leangelo was released from jail, but he would never play for UCLA again. Then if you've been following Leangelo, you know that him and Lamelo would go off to Lithuania for a short stint as Leangelo prepared for the 2018 draft, despite the fact that he was not really considered a legitimate prospect. And although he did put up 72 points against a youth China squad, the low level of competition he was playing against was very noticeable, and I don't think this really helped his career in any way. So unsurprisingly, Leangelo was not selected in the draft, and after that, he did play in his dad's basketball league for a little bit, but now it seems like the latest update is that probably modeling which is quite the turn of events but again considering that he is the worst basketball player out of his brothers i mean it is cool to see him doing his own thing so i wish him well and so there you have it guys thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed this video if there are any other players you want to see me cover maybe as their own entire video make sure to comment down those players names below i do always look at the comments i do love when you guys suggest videos because you know we've been on a grind recently I've been posting three videos a week and starting in january the goal is to post five videos a week so that means if you're not already make sure to subscribe so you don't miss a video make sure to turn post notifications on and if you're already subscribed thank you so much for supporting you're awesome we all know it and as always have an awesome day and cue that music by the way if you're still here while the music is cued here are two videos i think you are going to love watching all you have to do is just click on either one of them on the screen right here and other than that guys again have a great day and peace